Hello, my name is Malcolm Birch. I'm the chair of Lincolnshire Community Health Services NHS Trust and a very warm welcome this afternoon to our annual public meeting. Uh, the meetings have since COVID times really been done uh, virtually like this and we've continued because it allows more people to attend either live watching us at the moment or on demand. You're all very welcome both public partners and of course our staff as well. Today we're going to give you a bit of information about how the Trust has performed during uh, the year 22 to 23. Uh, uh, that performance will be against our strategic aims and we invite you to listen and to share and celebrate some of the biggest achievements in what was a very challenging year. There are a few formalities that I need to do. So uh, firstly, I need to uh, uh, invite us to agree the minutes from last year's annual public meeting. Uh, they're available on the website. Um, we've had no uh, suggestions for changes or amendments, so uh, we'll note those as uh, a, a record of last year's meeting. Another thing I need to do is to record all the changes to the board that we've had, and it has been a very busy year in that respect. So uh, I'm just going to go through a few of those that have left and a few of those that have joined. So uh, Tracy Pilcher, who was our director of nursing, left us on the 31st of August. Uh, Dr Yvonne uh, Owen, our medical director, retired on the 31st of July. Uh, we welcomed Dr Anne-Louise Shocker as our medical director on the 18th of July. And we also welcomed Reva Stewart, who was our chief operating officer, started on the 22nd uh, of August. We've also been joined by a joint director of nursing position by Dr. Karen, Dr. Professor Karen Dunderdale, uh, who's joined between us and United Lincolnshire's Hospital Trust. She joined us on the 17th of October and indeed is one of the speakers today. Um, Alan Kent, a non-executive director and chair of our audit committee, stepped down as an honor Executive Director on the 31st of January 2023 and we were joined uh, in, in taking his shoes if you like by Ian Oral, uh, who joined as a non-executive director and took up the uh, chairmanship of the audit committee uh, for us. We share Ian uh, uh, with the Lincolnshire Partnership NHS Foundation Trust. Our Annual reports and accounts are all available uh, on the website so you can see all the details of, of, of our operations and we're hoping at the end of this meeting uh, if we make sure we all stick to time that there'll also be an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, if you have them there's a Q&A function at the top of the screen. If you start posting your questions in there we'll try and gather any and endeavour to give answers today if we can or we can come back to you uh, uh, more formally. There's a few other changes uh, to the board and uh, uh, it's worth just noting those because some of them are here to, 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 to join us as speakers. So during the course of this year, not, not the year that we're, we're going, go, we've been talking about, Maz Fosh, our chief executive, left us and we have been joined by Andrew Morgan as our group CEO. Andrew's well known to the trust former CEO just of uh, LCHS, but now he's sharing his, his expertise across the two trusts uh, for us. Uh, today also we're being joined as a, by speaker by Sam Wild, our Director of Finance, our new Chief Operating Officer Julie Frake Harris, and uh, as I mentioned, Professor Karen Dunderdale as our Deputy Group CEO and Medical Director Anne-Louise Schocker. I'd also like just to note thanks to Elaine Bayliss, the previous chair, who left us at the end of uh, March. Uh, our, our gratitude and thanks to both Maz and to Elaine is great uh, over the, the, the previous years. The achievements they've made is, is really significant. But here we are uh, uh, wanting to move on uh, and uh, uh, embrace the future with this new team. So before we start the meeting, we've got a short video of the highlights uh, from the year to show you. Uh, and after that, uh, Andrew Morgan, our group CEO, will take over and uh, 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 take you through the rest of the meeting. Thank you very much.
OK, well, good afternoon, uh, everybody. I'm Andrew Morgan, and as uh, the chair said, I'm now the group chief executive uh, across Lincolnshire Community Health Services uh, and United Lincolnshire Hospitals Trust. Uh, and it's, it's a real delight uh, to be back uh, with you all uh, today, because as the chair said, uh, I was previously the LCHS uh, Chief Executive from uh, summer 2014 through to the summer of 2019. And in fact, my last annual public meeting would have been the one uh, in this time in 2018. So in that intervening period, I've been the Chief Executive at United Lincolnshire Hospitals NHS Trust and now Chief Executive uh, of both uh, organisations. LCHS was my first um, Chief Exec role in Lincolnshire. I've been Chief Exec of lots of other uh, places and it, it really is a delight to be back and to, to watch uh, that video there of all of the, the Trust's achievements in 22-23. Uh, and I'm very conscious that I'm before you now uh, having only taken up this group role in August of uh, this year, so very much the sort of returning uh, new boy. But I, I just wanted to make a point that at my time in LCHS in the past and in the last couple of months, really keen to see that that underlying message that we've got, that vision and purpose uh, that we've got about great care close to home, uh, remain central to not just what we're trying to do uh, as a trust, but remain central to what the wider health and social care system in Lincolnshire's trying to do. And just as importantly, it remains central to what the whole NHS does. So for me, the take home message from that is that uh, LCHS absolutely central to what the integrated care system in Lincolnshire uh, is about that whole message about home first, about great care close to home, about prevention, about looking after people as close to their own home as, as possible, really does ring true. And it's great to see that we'll be able to build on those achievements from 22, 23 uh, to take forward that national and local agenda uh, here uh, in Lincolnshire. So on, on this first slide, um, if you read the annual report, there'll be lots of figures uh, in that about uh, this uh, organisation. And we, we've just selected some of those key messages for you here to give you an idea of the scale uh, of the services uh, that we provide, the number of people uh, that we treat and the many different locations uh, that we operate from all part of that message that I just said about great care uh, close to home. And if we move on to the, the next slide of a bit of an overview of our actual services, re really helpful to remind people about both the range of services we provide, the localities in which we provide them, but also the people that we provide those services to. So we are an organisation about adults and children. Uh, we are about urgent and routine care uh, for people. We are about providing care in people's homes, in local clinics, uh, in community hospitals, and also in acute hospitals uh, as well. And that the range of those services we provide, uh, often not just about us as a standalone uh, statutory NHS trust, uh, but also about how we work with those other partners across the system, whether they are uh, the hospital trust, our primary care colleagues, uh, the voluntary sector, the care home sector, uh, or our friends uh, at the county council and the, the district councils. So a wide range of services provided across uh, the county, uh, provided both in person, uh, but also increasingly a, a digital and virtual offer uh, where that makes sense for the actual service provided and makes sense uh, for the service user. And we, we uh, deliver those services through the fantastic people that we employ. Uh, over two and a half thousand people. We employ great people to do great things for other people's loved ones. And I just like, while I have got the floor, 
to thank all of our colleagues, those people we employ directly, those people we employ through the bank, uh, our volunteers, uh, our agency colleagues who help us out occasionally. Just thank them for the fantastic work that they did during 22, uh, 23. A whole range of different professions, uh, nurses, therapists, doctors, uh, support staff, um, public health professionals. There's a whole range of people who are part of the LCHS team, part of the LCHS way, all of whom work together really, really successfully to deliver the services that we provide. And that th those services are captured in the strategies and plans that the organisation uh, has. Uh, and I've just got a, a handful of slides to, to remind people of both the strategic aims of the organisation and then the objectives uh, that go with them. And as an organisation, much like other NHS trusts uh, across the country, we, we we review our strategic aims every uh, five years or so, just to make sure that they're aligned with national and local policy. But each year we uh, refresh, revisit and renew our strategic objectives, just again to make sure that we've captured everything that's relevant to the services that we're trying to provide, relevant to the strategic aims uh, that are part of what uh, we have agreed to deliver uh, in Lincolnshire. So we, we've got those five strategic aims. Well, I'll just quickly run through uh, the, the slides that pick those up. So the first one's about providing safe, high quality, personalised uh, population health care. I won't run through all of the uh, strategic objectives uh, that go with them, but what I'm trying to leave you with is a flavour of those aims will reflect that great care close to home message uh, that I started with will reflect national policy. So, you know, being about high quality, uh, safe care, trying to provide and deliver sustainable community health services uh, going forward, doing that uh, through our people. So it's about recruitment, it's about retention, it's about having a productive, capable uh, and supported workforce, people who want to work for us and do a grand job uh, when they're with us. Always conscious that we use other people's money to get the things that um, those people need. So very mindful of value for money, making the best use of every pound that the taxpayer uh, has given us and ensuring that we have a sustainable uh, financial future but absolutely using money to get those things that we want, which is that high quality, safe, personalised uh, care. And understanding that we don't do any of this in isolation. We are part of a, an integrated care system uh, in Lincolnshire. We've developed deliberately very close relationships uh, with our system partners. Uh, and the aim uh, of the, the trust is to continue uh, collaborating with those partners uh, to lead integration uh, and innovation and the group model that we're now in with our colleagues at ULHT uh, is a key part of how we make sure that we give the public uh, the service that they need. So hopefully that, that was a helpful overview uh, of our organisation. Lots more detail in the annual report which is available on our website so I would encourage people to have a look uh, at the annual report. Uh, I'd encourage people to uh, attend our various meetings held in public uh, and engage with us in whatever way uh, that you can. What we do really, really matters to the health and well-being of our local population. Uh, and as I said, when I sort of first appeared on your screen, I'm immensely proud uh, and privileged to be back here uh, at LCHS. So I'll stop uh, at that point, now hand you over to Sam Wild, uh, our Director of Finance and Business Intelligence, who will talk to us about the financial performance of LCHS. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Sam Wild, and I'm the Trust Director of Finance and uh, Business Intelligence. Uh, the Trust has an obligation to manage taxpayers' money well, and deliver quality healthcare services that are both financially sustainable 
but also represent good value for money. In 2022 to 23 financial year, uh, the trust received income of 140 million pounds. That was a 17 million pound increase on the previous year. Uh, of that 17 million, around 7 million was to cover uh, inflation in our cost base, but the other 10 million represented investment in either new services or expanding existing ones to deliver even more great care close to home, including the discharge to assess service, urgent community response, virtual wards, immunizations and vaccinations, hospital avoidance, response team and outpatient antimicrobial therapy. Our trust has a strong track record in effectively managing its financial performance and delivering against our financial plan commitments. Uh, we continued that in 22-23, working collaboratively with our system partners to deliver service priorities, transform services and ensure value for money. Our expenditure for the financial year was also £140 million. We therefore met our commitment to deliver a break-even financial position in the year. We also delivered our target of £4.8 million of efficiency savings. And overall, LCHS services are 6% more productive than the national average, according to the latest published statistics. Over the course of the year, we invested £3.4 million of capital expenditure uh, in clinical equipment, our estates and information management and technology. This was an increase over the £2.3 million we invested in the previous year, and it's great to see that investment growing year on year. We're planning for £4 million of investment in 22, 23 and 24. We ended the year with a healthy cash balance of £30.5 million, which was in line with the level we started uh, the year at as well. I'd now like to share a video which shows how we continue to invest in reducing digital exclusion for local people in Lincolnshire. And after that, we'll welcome our Chief Operating Officer, Julie Frey Harris. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lorraine Clark and I'm a digital coach for Lincolnshire Community Health Service NHS Trust. Digital inclusion, um, especially in areas like this that are so digitally deprived, um, is helping people to enable themselves to access the internet and access services. In my role as a digital coach, I go um, mainly around the East Coast. Um, I get referrals from healthcare professionals for different services. Um, I do drop-ins in areas like this in Skegness, where people can come up and ask for help. So a lot of people that I go to see, they don't know anything about digital devices. They don't, they don't have a mobile phone. They probably just have a house phone and no internet at home. So it's really starting from scratch, sort of even as basic as turning it on. Um, and with the iPad, sort of like showing the switch at the top and the home button and going really back to basics. My name is Larry Clark. I'm retired. Uh, ex Paul Mine, ex soldier. Uh, and because I was an ex soldier, I then soon came here, I believe, to do a veterans thing. And I, one of the people who was there was Lorraine Clark. Yeah. And she said, Stop talking to her. And I talked about the, the difficulties that I was having getting online. Accessing things online, we work through an iPad. She also helps me with some stuff I was doing with my computer, even though it takes forever. But she, she did it. And I had two stops uh, one was physical, was the last one was mental, it was my memory. So I lost months and months and months of stuff that I had to try and get back. I think it's confidence building. And if you're confident in yourself, you can do more. You feel as if you can do more. And, you know, the, the internet isn't so much of a mystery. 
they're always big because it's stretching all the time. And we're not, we're not going to keep up there at 17. You know, you're not going to keep up with it. But at least you can hang on in there for the things that are basic. Don't struggle. It's there. You only have to access it. So get off your backside and access it because you'll find within days, weeks, it's like a new world. I have the honour of presenting some of the key highlights over the past year, which is a real privilege as your new coup. As you can just see from the earlier video, there's so much fantastic work to talk about, and I could talk to you about all of it for hours, but I'm under strict instructions not to. Um, so I'm just going to pull out a few of the key highlights, um, which is a further insight into how the LCHS services are improving healthcare in Lincolnshire. So our integrated care hubs, they were launched only in 2022 and they're based in both Lincoln Commute County Hospital and Pilgrim Hospital in Boston. And they're a really exciting partnership collaboration. They bring together all partner organisations thinking about how we can discharge our patients in the most timely way possible. So they bring together our acute colleagues, our community health partners, that's us, our adult social care and reablement teams, as well as the housing experts, neighbourhood teams linked to primary care and also the voluntary sector, all focusing on one thing discharging our patients, getting them home, closer to home. So wherever possible, we do discharge to our patients' home. Sometimes that isn't possible, but when we do support our patients to go back home, we make sure they've got the right care wrapped around them. Lots of complex services are able to support you in your home, and therefore we're enabling our people in their homes to be as independent as possible. So stepping into the NHS has never been so easy. Um, LCHS became one of only three in, um, trusts in the East Midlands who've successfully achieved main provider status for education and skills funding agency. And what does that mean? It means we can now deliver apprenticeships to people who would like to come and work in the NHS have a career with us, but you're outside of the trust already. So this is really exciting. The Lincolnshire NHS Apprenticeship Centre is of huge benefit to our county. It means that it makes it much easier for you to join the NHS, even when you don't have the relevant qualifications or experience. And you'll be pleased to know the centre is able to deliver a really wide number of clinical and non-clinical apprenticeships at different levels and we get really good results too. So for 20 years LCHS before we were able to embark on this particular initiative we've been established as an MVQ training centre and we've become an employer provider back in 2017 which is really highly successful. Trust staff in the team have built really robust relationships with local schools, colleges, universities, all those who may be interested in a career in the NHS and being able to help them achieve their goals. And I have to say, a career in the NHS can't be beaten. So LCHS um, has established a volunteers programme and like Andrew's already said, I'd like to personally thank all of our volunteers. We couldn't do it without you. In 2022, the Trust successfully secured £25,000 for funding from Health Education England to launch a new initiative to encourage volunteers to come and volunteer in our community hospitals across Lincolnshire. Volunteer to a career. You can see it beautifully links with the last slide I've just talked to you about. 
It's designed by clinicians and it en enables our volunteers to become inspired to take up careers in the NHS and maybe a professional role. Equip them with appropriate tools and knowledge to thrive. Volunteers are vital to our wards. You really do provide stimulation, company for our patients. Maybe sometimes if you have no visitors of, who come to see you yourself, your volunteer will be the person who sit and talk to you. As part of this work, we're excited to, in, to offer really fantastic opportunities for our volunteers to complete their qualifications, learn new skills, meet new people and be part of the team. So we're really, really thankful that you came and were part of the LCHS team with us, a career in the NHS. So now I'm moving away from careers in the NHS to our Freedom to Speak Up Guardian, our FTSE. Well, so whilst I have the floor, it only feels right to promote our Freedom to Speak Up Guardian. They play a really lead role in encouragement, engagement and integration of our staff. A culture of Speak Up is instilled throughout the organisation. It truly is a safe place to speak up. And we're continuously improving, working with our people to think about the best way to make sure that you do feel able to speak up and tell us. The number of contacts with our Freedom to Speak Up Guardian continues to increase year on year, and we believe that's a good thing. It shows that it is embedded within LCHS. I'd now like to introduce a video which shows what it's like to work in speech and language therapy. And then I'll hand over to our Deputy Chief Exec and Director of Nursing, AHPs and Quality, Professor Karen Dunderdale. I'm based at Lincoln County Hospital and I work with adults who have head and neck cancer. I started with the Trust around nine years ago and have worked in a range of different roles, including community working, um, acute medical wards, and I really enjoy my current role because of the diversity, the opportunities for joint working, and just the variety the role gives me. A part of the role that I really enjoy is running the video thoroscopy clinics at Lincoln County Hospital and Pilgrim Hospital in Boston. We're really proud to have an established video thoroscopy clinic and we see a range of patients in these clinics um, with all different types of conditions. For anyone who's thinking of joining our team, I would say definitely apply <laughs> because we're a very friendly, approachable team. Um, I think we have a good balance of, you know, the seriousness of the job and, but also that social side of things and we spend a lot of time at work. We want that to be enjoyable and it needs to be a supportive team in order for people to thrive at work. Good afternoon, colleagues and members of the public who've joined us. My name is Karen Dunsdale and I'm the Deputy Group Chief Exec and the Director of Nursing Quality and AHPs at LCHS. Our board agreed in early 2022 that we would develop a new clinical strategy that would span 2023 up to 2028. And it's a privilege for me to offer this pub annual public meeting, our clinical strategy, which both the medical director, Dr. Anne-Louise Shocker and I led. It helps us reflect on the significant system and organisational developments in the past three years including the COVID response and new primary legislation that led to the creation of Lincolnshire's integrated care system and to bring it in line with the integrated care strategy and NHS integrated care boards joint forward plan timeframes. The clinical strategy has several key design principles. It's underpinned by population health management, and that means a way of working to help frontline teams understand current health and care needs and predict what local people will need in the future. 
is also underpinned by people. Patients, families, carers and the public are central to everything that we do. It's also underpinned by quality, safety and effectiveness, which are embedded across everything that we do. It articulates the vision of services and a workforce which work together across health and care organisations to enable the best population outcomes. And it encompasses all of our services and our ambitions, which you've heard of, for health across the lifespan from cradle to grave. There are three overarching themes to the new clinical strategy, and they are firstly, work with health and care partners to deliver care closer to home, to ensure accessible, integrated and responsive care. Secondly, people are at the centre of all that we do. We will work with people to enable them to live their best lives from birth to the end of life. And thirdly and finally, support people to live well in their communities for longer. We'll work with people and health and care partners to build strong and supportive communities for the future. I'd now like to share a video from one of our patients about her experience of our pulmonary rehabilitation service before handing over to our medical director, Dr. Anne-Louise Shocker. Thank you. Best thing that ever happened to me going to pulmonary rehab. They taught me so much, but they were so kind. They taught me how to use my inhalers. I've been using them for 20 years wrong, and they taught me the correct way to do it, uh, which was just one little thing. They taught me all the exercises and went through them with me. I can't, I can't tell you how patient they were. I look forward to it. I, I was sorry when it ended. I, I wished it had carried on. You can't believe the difference in me now. I, I do things now that I could not do. I, I never dreamed of doing it again. Uh, I've carried on doing my exercises. I've joined the yoga. I go on my husband's motorbike on the back of it again, which I haven't done since well, for three years at least, but I've been on the back of it again now. I've been abroad on holiday, and it, if it hadn't been for the respiratory team, I wouldn't have gotten home. I'm living my best life, and it's all thanks to them. Thank you very much, Karen, and hello, everyone joining us. I'm going to talk a little bit about the virtual wards that LCHS help deliver. So virtual wards provide a safe alternative for some people to receive care and monitoring comfortably in their own home. Virtual wards provide assessments, treatments, including intravenous antibiotics and remote monitoring for people who would otherwise be in hospital they can prevent hospital admission and can allow people to return home from hospital sooner to continue their treatment and recovery in their own home. This innovative approach delivers high quality care safely and conveniently for people at home, which is where we are told by them they would prefer to be. In a virtual ward, support can include remote monitoring using technology platforms and medical devices such as pulse oximeters, which measure the oxygen level in people's bloodstream. Support may also involve face-to-face -face care and visits from multidisciplinary teams based in the community. Virtual wards help relieve pressure on hospital and urgent care services by looking after people remotely and they promote working across our organisations, resulting in people's care being more joined up, whether they're being supported by community services 
hospital staff or their own GP. We have LCHS staff working on several different virtual wards that specialise in looking after people with different conditions. We have virtual wards for heart failure, older people living with frailty, respiratory illnesses such as chronic airways disease, complex all age neurology and acute medical problems. In 2022 to 23, we had a combined capacity of approximately 115 virtual beds and further capacity has been developed and implemented ahead of this coming winter. Feedback from patients and staff have been overwhelmingly positive and I am delighted to say that the work done by the Integrated Heart Failure Team has been shortlisted for the National HRH Prince of Wales Award for Integrated Approaches to Care. Thank you very much and I will now hand back to our Chair Malcolm Birch. It's almost seamless the way I wait for the red light to go on, isn't it? Great, so we got through that in really good time. Um, we've now got time for a couple of questions. Now we have had uh, two submitted uh, in advance uh, uh, already. And I think the first one of those uh, is related to, here it comes, uh, uh, what are we doing about to improve recruitment and retention uh, issues in Lincolnshire? And I think uh, Sam Wild uh, uh, is going to answer that one for us. Sam. Thank you, Malcolm, and thank you, Melissa. Uh, an excellent question. Uh, so to improve recruitment, we've created a Lincolnshire wide attraction strategy uh, to bring together all the organisations under a one workforce banner and the Be Lincolnshire campaign has been relaunched. Re uh, we've also ensured that our job adverts hold information about living and working in the county and in health and care to try and attract uh, people from out of county to relocate to Lincolnshire. Uh, working as a system, we have a calendar of careers, events and fairs uh, that we're attending collaboratively, uh, particularly in schools and colleges across the county to ensure we raise the profile of careers in health. And we're also working to ensure the recruitment processes are as smooth and timely for candidates as possible. And to try and address retention issues, we've done some analysis of why uh, people are choosing to leave their roles in our organisations. Uh, there's been a big focus on flexible working to uh, try and support those who want to remain but might need some flexibility or adjustments to their role in order to do so. Uh, we have a cost of living working group who are uh, trying to mitigate some of the financial barriers uh, to staying employed with us. And Lincolnshire has been selected as an exemplar site for the NHS People Promise programme nationally uh, to wholly focus on retaining our people uh, and things happening there include having stay conversations and career coaching. And finally, we're also focusing on staff health and wellbeing, supporting uh, members of staff to remain fit and well at work. Thank you, Melissa. Great, thanks, Sam. Uh, the other, the other um, question we had submitted in advance is to do with uh, dropping digital sessions in Sleaford, and I think uh, Judy Frank Harris, our Chief Operating Officer, is going to answer that one for us. Thanks ever so much for the question. Um, unfortunately. The binary answer to this question is unfortunately no, not at the moment, not in Sleaford, but that doesn't mean there isn't support available. So the LCH digital drop in sessions are actually focusing on the East Coast at the moment, but you can um, you can book a digital one to one in Sleaford if that is supportive. And we're going to add the details of how to um, access that support on our website after this meeting. So you will be able to get the details. 
Also, our digital team has developed really strong partnerships with other organisations. So it is also worth looking on the website and linking in with our digital support team, because it may be one of the other organisations um, based in Sleaford who would be able to offer that support you're looking for. So I'm really sorry that um, we don't have the drop-in sessions currently running in Sleaford, but there are lots of opportunities to get the support and I hope we are able to do that. So, um, and if you're not able to find on the, on the website, then maybe you ping me an email and we'll, we'll work it through. We will get you that support. Thanks for the question. Great, thanks, Julie. Um, we've also had a couple of questions posted as we've gone along, which I'll, I'll read both of them out. I'll say a bit about them, then I, I'll invite Andrew to say a little bit afterwards. And the two questions are, um, how will the group model improve services for patients? And the second question is, uh, is LCHS going to merge with ULHT in the near future? Now, um, for Clearly, our members of staff will know where we are. Maybe the public aren't as aware, but we're we are at the moment entering into a uh, a group model between uh, us, LCHS, and the acute hospital. And the goal of that is to uh, get away with any organisational barriers to actually integrating our care, so that we get better outcomes for patients. That's what's behind it. We're doing it from a position where both trusts are doing quite well. So this is something that we're doing that we think will actually make our services better, more integrated and can deliver uh, more for our, our patients, which are uh, clearly the driver uh, for us. On the issue about merger, uh, the answer is no. Uh, uh, we're going uh, as far as we can into a group model, a mergers, raise all sorts of other technical and legal questions around our status as trusts that we feel at this stage would just be a distraction. It would slow us down. What we want to do is integrate our services as much as we can, as quickly as we can, so that we can provide better services to the to the people of Lincolnshire. So just to repeat, no to a merger anytime soon, but we are going to try and integrate as far as we can uh, and as quickly as we can so that we can provide uh, a better service. Um, let me just invite Andrew as our group CEO to see whether he has anything to add on that one. Thank you, uh, Chair. I, I think I'm almost surplus to requirements on that one. You've done such a great job uh, in, in answering it. But I, I think that, yeah, the real thrust of your answers there were about why we're doing this and it's about what's better and best for our patients. So we want better outcomes, better integration, uh, and we think the ever closer working of the, the two organisations, when we're seeing often the same patients on the same pathways, but we've managed to design things separately, uh, a separate trust that actually we think we can do better uh, by coming together uh, in the group. Uh, and there is evidence of that from around the country where other organisations have formed a group uh, that uh, things in, are improving and I, I think already in, in the first few weeks and months uh, of our group model when I'm out and about walking uh, around the services and I, I do ask our, our staff uh, about the benefits of the group uh, many are saying they are already seeing an opening up of dialogue an opening up of how people work together improved communication improved coordination and, you know, I, I think those are very encouraging uh, starts. Not going to claim that everyone's uh, a fan of the group. There are some people who don't think it's uh, a good idea and we, we have to respect those views uh, and see what we can do to address some of the concerns uh, that people have uh, got on that. And in terms of the merger question, I'm absolutely chair, we, we are going for full integration short of a merger. I think going down the formal NHS transaction route, which is what uh, a merger is. I think that would slow us down. I think it would take too long. I think it would end us with us being focused on process, uh, not patients, and in effect would be a distraction. Uh, that's not what we're here for. Uh, we're not going down uh, that route. I can't say what the longer term future holds, but at the moment, no, uh, a merger is not on the cards in 
the short term. Thank you very much. Great, thanks, Andrew. Um, I don't see any further questions coming in on that. I mean, obviously, they are those, those last two questions are really important. There's a lot of change happening at the moment. You 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 almost got that from when I introduced right at the start when I was reading those that had arrived and, and, and those that had left us. There's a lot going on, but um, I think uh, in terms of managing that change, we do need to just focus on the patients and, and while we're here. In in Closing uh, the session today, I'd, I'd like to take some of the comments in the in the chat. I see one there from the chair of the uh, ICB. Thanks, Jerry, for for that. Um, I've only been chair since April, and I and I found it's an absolutely wondrous uh, experience. Even though there's a lot going on, and people say, "Gosh, how do you cope with all the change?" Um, for me, the the the, the most important thing uh, around working in the NHS and in particular working at LCHS is the people. Now we often say a lot about the LCHS way but actually it's very real to me. We're a values-based trust and we'll only deliver better services in partnership with all our partners but also within the group model through the work of the people that that, that work for us and I am constantly um, surprised, amazed, impressed by the, the work that we see. And we've managed to showcase a very small amount of that today, but some of that inspirational stuff from, from helping people access uh, digital resources to our volunteers, uh, to that lady talking about getting on the back of her, father, uh, her husband's motorcycle again after her rehabilitation. That's just, they're just wondrous stories, uh, aren't they, about what, what we really do. And that comes about because yes, we're an organized and professional and business-like organisation, but it rests on the people that deliver it for us and the care and, dare I say, it, the love that they show for those that, 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 that come into our services. So as we go forward, I'm really uh, looking forward to the change that's coming because I think it will improve uh, our, our services going forward. We'll keep working uh, together on that. Lots to do, um, uh, but, but, but thank you to everybody in the trust, thank you to our partners. And I suppose I ought to say a few, few thank yous for those that have organised our annual public meeting today. It's been a, a short event, but it's been really helpful in just showcasing the, the breadth and depth of what we do as a trust and how important we are to the people of Lincolnshire. So those of you that have watched and tuned in and those of us that watch us on catch up, what a thought, who'd think I'd ever be saying that in my life? Somebody watching me on catch up, maybe not, well, let's see. So those of you who have joined us uh, and have watched our catch, uh, on catch up, thank you for uh, listening today. I hope you've enjoyed it. There's loads more stuff on the website that tells you what we do and what we're seeking to achieve. And indeed, if you ever have a question or you, or, or, or you want to find out what's going on, just speak up and ask us a question. So thank you all for joining us uh, today and I'll wish you a good afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>